passionate, both of us, about, um, you know, detoxifying our homes as much as possible. And up oh, there's someone else coming in. Okay. And um, it's we just we just know the difference in our lives since we've been able to, um, you know, get our home to a more um, low toxic environment. Um, and I'm just, we're just gonna tell you a little bit about ourselves and our stories, um, not to prolong it, but um, I started with Young Living because I was looking for a cleaner, okay? So, cause I've had a cleaning business for over 30 years. And I tried many different natural, supposedly natural things. So I wanted a clean cleaner that cleaned. And I would find um, so many things that, you know, were, um, um, I'm sorry, I got a phone call and I lost, you're still there, Caitlin. I, I mean, Caitlin, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, sorry. yeah, cause I had gotten a phone call, sorry. I had tried so many things and I found out that they really weren't, you know, natural. They really weren't clean. And we're gonna talk about why they really aren't clean. Um, and as I was cleaning, I would keep going back to these chemicals because I found that I couldn't find a natural cleaner that actually would leave a house clean. So, um, but I would joke about using the chemicals. I would say to people, oh, I'm probably gonna get a, a brain tumor from all the toxins I'm breathing in. Cause I knew I was like, I'm cleaning showers, I'm cleaning, I mean, got my head down in the toilet, all of that. And I was breathing this in for 30 some years. So I would, I would joke about it. Not, not, of course it's not funny, but so I learned about thieves. And when I found the thieves cleaner, it just changed my life because I found something that actually really works. And it actually truly is plant-based and there is no fragrance in it. It's all powered by essential oils that are in the, the thieves oil. Um, and so being part of team live well and our young living team, I just continue to learn more and more about toxins that I wasn't even aware that I was being exposed to every day in uh, my home. And so it, it really opened my eyes to, um, you know, the, 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 the things that I was exposing myself and my family to and I had over the years. So one of the first things I learned about was fragrance, okay? Fragrance is labeled as fragrance, perfume, or cologne. Those are like the typical terms that you'll see on products. And um, I remember taking my daughters to Bath and Body Works and I always gravitated more to the natural sense, more than the perfumey sense. And, and, and that's the thing with scent, with a fragrance, it's very personal, right? What you love, someone else is like, re could repel them, you know? It's so, so personal. Um, and it's funny because fragrance means a pleasant, sweet smell. And so that, that's really different for everybody. So what is fragrance? Like what's so bad about fragrance? Well, it's basically a soup of all kinds of different chemicals. Actually, there's 5,000 molecular fragrance components that make up this soup and they're heavily rotated and we really have no idea what's in it because in 1973, the Federal Fair Packaging and Labeling Act created a loophole that said it was a trade secret. And it wasn't, it wasn't necessary to disclose it because they insisted it was safe. And so um, one of the things, um, if you have Netflix to look at a, a documentary called Stink and on there, it's a man's journey of, um, trying to find out why his children, her daughter's pajamas from Justice stank. <laughs> and it was his, it's his journey, but there's also other people in it too about 
how they were reacting to different fragrances and things. And it's, it's very, very uh, insightful. Um, so this concoction of fragrance, it was really created to cover up something that doesn't smell so good, like an unpleasant odor. So two bad things, you know, it makes it, it, it makes it bad worse because um, what you're gonna learn is this fragrance is some of the, the, the toxins that are in fragrance is unbelievable. But what fragrance does is it lights up our brain. It literally lights up our brain and we're drawn to it. And if you haven't noticed, which I, I have, that scents are getting stronger, right? Over the years, we used to, when I was a kid growing up, you only had a few different products that your mom used and the scents were kind of mild, right? But now we've got Febreze to spray on our fabrics, on, on everything. And then we got also Unstoppables that will make your laundry smell for six weeks. Like you just got them out of the dryer and washer. So we become accustomed to smells and now we, we need to, you know, I can't even walk down because I'm detoxed from all these smells. I can't even walk down the cleaning aisle. It just, it just repulses me. I, I just can't do it. Um, so one of the things um, that's a common ingredient, ingredient is called acetonitrol. It's A-C-E-T-O-N-I-T-R-I-L-E. -E. Now this chemical is made, it, it's used in making pharmaceuticals, perfumes, rubber products, pesticides, nail polish remover, and batteries, okay? And this is found in fragrance, which we realize fragrance is in everything, right? So it's a toxic, colorless, and it, it smells like ether. Does anyone, you know, you know what ether smells like. It's not really a great odor. It's kind of us and has a sweet burnt taste if you're tasting it. It's extremely dangerous and it can cause severe health issues. You know, mild ones like headaches, more severe like tremors, and it can even cause death. So it's in, it's in everything that we use. Um, so all these ingredients, which whatever they are, we, we of course don't know what they are, they can cause us to have simple things like negative emotions, but it can cause us skin problems like dermatitis, allergic reactions, um, asthma, other respiratory conditions, cancer, and even birth defects. Um, in fact, in newborn babies, studies have shown that 80% of chemicals that are detected in the maternal mother's blood samples are found in the umbilical cord. So that indicates that they pass through the placenta into the fetal environment. And these babies are born, they've been tested and they're born with these, this toxicity in their bodies when they're a newborn. So it's, it's something really, really to consider. Um, and Lori's gonna talk more about the dirty dozen, which are other toxins and chemicals that are in, um, in our products. So fragrance also affects our planet. It gets in our water supply, in our, it affects our indoor and outdoor air. In fact, our indoor air, now think about it, we're in our homes more than ever. Uh, it's winter time, our windows in certain areas are closed more. Our indoor air is five to seven times more polluted than the outdoor air because of things that we are using in our homes. Um, it's in the outdoor air, it said, uh, I read that synthetic musk has been found in remote areas like Norway. So it is getting in the environment and it is being pushed everywhere. Um, I don't know if you, when you walk the neighborhoods, you smell people's dryers going, right? Mm -hmm. And some people love that smell. They're like, oh, that smells so good. And I'm like, I can't. I can't, but it's going out into the air and you're breathing it in 
and it's it's just generating into our environment so it's everywhere um fragrance is in our beauty products uh cleaning products of course it's in feminine products so for young women our our girls i wish i would have known this i have three girls um they're they're um feminine products are very toxic. And when you think about that, they're right, either going in the body or on the body, your body is absorbing everything. So switching to organic, clean, uh, feminine products is super important. Um, it's in trash bags. <laughs> you know, you can, it, you have to be really careful. You can't just grab trash bags. You have to make sure they're not the scented ones. And um, diapers, um, fragrances and diapers. Of course, it's in things like candles, plug-ins. And I want to tell you a story about a man I cleaned for. He has a house in Delaware and he went down there and bought a recycled uh, plastic fence. And he was putting it out, you know, and digging the holes and putting it out. And he's like, what? who is doing laundry? Now he lives on the beach. It's a beach house. Nobody around. He's like, where, who is doing laundry? Here he realized the fence was made with recycled plastic, which like our, like people's, um, you know, laundry detergent bottles. And it's, it's in like, it's in there. So that's, that was the plastic from this recycled plastic from this fence. So I thought that was a really crazy story. So we need to be concerned and we need to be informed so that we can really protect our families. Um, let's also talk about greenwashing. Um, we see more and more of the labels on things like it'll say, you know, plant-based, earth, um, It'll say earth friendly, natural, bio, chemical free, eco. And they're very smart because they know the consumer is getting smarter and we're thinking about these things. And so they've found a way to, you know, seem like they're being responsible, um, you know, taking care of this, taking care of the environment, making it better products for us. Um, but really, it's, it's really a disguise because these products still have fragrance in. Um, you can go to the EWG um, and check that out. It's a website. Um, there, there's different levels, like there's one to 10, one being the cleanest, 10 being the dirtiest. There are products out there that would be really clean but fragrance puts them up to a seven or eight. Um, and to me, of all the things we wanna get rid of, fragrance is the number one thing that we wanna to try to avoid at all cost. Uh, we also see now essential oils is a big buzzword. Mm -hmm. And we see that being used in laundry, um, uh, laundry, the plugins, they're adding essential oils, say powered by essential oils. So we don't want to be fooled by this because we know that it's still fragrance and it's not regulated. And when they say essential oils, even if you buy an essential oil, like at Target, you only have to have 5% or oil, actual oil in it to say it's of therapeutic value. And most of them will have warnings on there you know, the warning labels on, and they will have an expiration date. If the oils are pure, they will not have an expiration date because pure oils will not spoil unless you like sit them out in the sun for days. They'll just, you know, they're not really going to spoil, but they won't be very valuable after that. So um, the trade secrets, this again, it keeps them protected because they can add fragrance. They can add what they want and nobody's, nobody's checking on them. So we have to, you know, be our own self advocate. We have to educate ourselves so we can protect our family. So that 
fragrance to me is like the number one thing to avoid. But now Lori's going to talk about the Dirty Dozen. <laughs> Wasn't there a movie called The Dirty yeah. Dozen one time? It's, it's yeah. not like a Clint Eastwood like movie. Like a Western it's movie. <laughs> I'm going to share a, a graphic I have here, hopefully. Um, let's try this. Can you guys see that? The Dirty Dozen graphic. Can you see it mm -hmm. or no? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, so these are 12 things that ingredients that we can look for, like later, if you want to look through your, your products, your cleaning products, your, um, your makeup, your lotion, all of these things to look for these items. And we're just going to go over them quickly. Um, um, number one is BHA and BHT. That's an endocrine disruptor and a carcinogen used in cosmetics, coal tar dyes that are in processed food, lipstick and hair dyes. That, that's a carcinogen. Um, DEA related ingredients, that's a carcinogen um, in moisturizers and shampoos. Um, dibutyl phthalates, they're endocrine disruptors and in nail care products. Um, formaldehyde releasing preservatives in, in cosmetics, that's a carcinogen. Parabens, I think that's one that probably we're a little more familiar with, that's an endocrine disruptor. Um, they're used in a lot of cosmetics. Um, Denise talked about number seven, perfume and fragrances. Um, number eight is PEG compounds. So that's another carcinogen and it's a base for cosmetic creams. Petrolatum, that's one we're familiar with. It's a, it's a carcinogen, but it's used in lip balms, hair products. Um, siloxanes are endocrine disruptors. Um, sodium laurel sulfate, that's a carcinogen, that's like a, a surfactant that will make your cleaning um, products um, sudsy and bubbly. Triclosan, you maybe have seen that if like if you go um, to the hospital and wash your hands, that they have it in a lot of like the antibacterial soaps and things like that. Um, and so it also mentions it um, what an endocrine disruptor is, that it interferes with our endocrine um, system that can cause reproductive, neurological, and immune effects. And it, it can um, increase our um, production of hormones. It can decrease the production of others. It can imitate our hormones. It can turn one hormone into another. You know, it's just um, basically um, wreaks havoc with our hormones. So obviously that's not something that we're interested in having in our products. So it's just something to check out um, because you might say, oh, well, there's just a little bit of this or a little bit of that. But over time, as we, these products accumulate in our body, it can cause major problems. And that's why this topic is kind of near and dear to my heart because it's something that I was having problems with, with my skin, that I couldn't hardly use any soaps, any lotions, shampoos. And I was desperately trying to find products that I could use that wouldn't make me break out and a horrible itchiness. And, oh, it's just, it was miserable. And until I was able to find products that, that are clean. Um, and now I don't have that problem anymore because I'm using practically all um, Young Living products for everything I use. But um, it's just really important because if you start looking at these, these things, I found a statistic that the National Institute of Safety and Health studied 2,983 ingredients in products in our home. And out of that number, they found 884 toxic ingredients, that 314 caused biological mutations, 218 caused reproductive problems, 778 were toxic to the human body, and 146, get this one, they knew caused cancerous tumors but they were allowed in the United States, even though they were banned in other countries around the world. Mm. So, and these chemicals are allowed in nearly every type of cleaning supply in the US. And within 26 seconds of exposure, chemicals are found in measurable amounts in our, in our body. So, mm. <laughs> yeah. and get this one, the average woman applies 300 chemicals to her body every day, 80 before breakfast. So 
Um, why don't you put in the chat what you think are some of the top most dangerous products that you have in your home right now? Just everybody put, put something in the chat. Um, <laughs> and then I'll tell you what the top 10 list is according to the EPA. Yes. And that some of the things you mentioned in there is uh, like, um, the, the, like with our deodorant is a big one. Um, and think about it, our skin is our biggest organ and what we lay in at night, what we, what we um, put on our skin, I mean, it's absorbing into our, all our cells in our body. So I'm gonna talk about bioaccumulation. Lori alluded to that, but what is that like over time? Yeah, these are good ones. Soaps. Um, Karina hit the nail on the head with the top yeah. one. Plugins, air fresheners, yeah. deodorant, shampoo, makeup, candles, laundry detergent, soaps, candles. Yeah, you yes. guys are, are nailing it. It's, you basically got the top 10 list. I think, I don't know if dish soap was on there, um, hairspray and gel. Hair gel, Dylan, Dylan and Ruth just put that oh, down. Okay. Yeah. You guys pretty much hit them all, yeah. And you know what's so interesting is when I did the research on this is of course the 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 really bad thing that we think of is going to happen from from exposure to these is cancer, you know? But there's like about 10 things that are symptoms of being chemically overloaded that we might not even attribute to to that. Things like being lethargic, can't focus, trouble sleeping, chronic inflammation, unexplained pain, skin issues, hormone imbalances, hot flashes, stress, anxiety. Those can be symptoms of being chemically overloaded. And allergies too. Like who doesn't have allergies? Who doesn't have a stuffy nose or runny nose? I don't know why it's, you know, it, it's just, you don't know what day, what is triggering it. And um, this bioaccumulation, is that, is that, were you done, Lori, or yes, I don't want to go ahead? Go. No, no, that that's awesome information. It's so so important for us to know this and to share this with people we love, um, you know. And and that's what we're doing. It we're doing on the basis of love. We 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 if we find anything we love, if it's a great restaurant, if it's it's a great place to get great clothes at a great deal, whatever it is, we want to tell people, right? So. This is just so important um, because it's really our health. And without our health, I mean, like, even if you're sick for a couple of days, think about the time you lost, you know, you're just like, you know, oh yeah, maybe it's nice because you're busy all the time to have a day of rest, but really it's like, you're just not productive. You're not getting things done. And then if, if you, if it creates a chronic illness, it can just be, just, just make you irritable, right? All the time. So, um, but bioaccumulation, um, we know we usually say moderation, all things are good. You know, if you have ice cream once a week, oh, you know, that's a nice treat or whatever. So moderation is good. It's a good plan to live by. So like you need to take a medicine for something, you know, you might take a, maybe you get a, um, maybe a urinary tract infection, say, and you need to take an antibiotic. I mean, there's times we need to take antibiotics and that's, that's okay. Um, there they are, they do serve a purpose. Um, we know they've been misused and used ways too much, but there are times like if you have a serious sinus infection, you're gonna probably need to get an antibiotic. So if you take it for a short time or a single dose of something, you know, our bodies are created amazing and they, they can detox. I mean, that's, we were created to be, have the liver and have all these, you know, mm -hmm. organs in our body to help us to detox naturally. And, and we do that. Our bodies are created to do that. But bioaccumulation is the process of which our bodies accumulate toxins faster than they can eliminate them. So if we're using all these products every day, day by day, month by month, year by year, they're accumulating in our body and our body is not able to detox from that. It just can't keep up. Um, so, um, 
so a little bit becomes a lot, right? Over time. And um, the, sergen- the sy- synergistic effects of combinations are worse than an individual chemical alone. So like that dirty dozen, if we're using products and they're all in there, they're interacting with each other and who knows what's going on. And, and they're, they're being stored in our fat cells and it's being circulated through our body and it can just stick somewhere. And for someone that could be cancer, for someone that could be this, so that. So we're, our bodies are just gonna react differently. So we don't really know, you know, like many of you were saying, you use these products, you don't really know what you're exposing your families and your pets to, because pets are also what we use on to wash our floors, what we, what we when we use, uh, we wash their blankets and the same thing and they lay on their blankets. They're also being affected excuse me, affected by it. And I've been noticing, like, I don't have animals, but I've been noticing so many people complain that their dogs have allergies and they spend thousands of dollars at the vet trying to help their dogs with allergies when it could be some of this could be the reason why. It's their, the bioaccumulation in their body is also, and their, their bodies are different than ours. Um, so, um, And even if we don't have immediate reaction, like some people like Lori, she would use some type of lotion and and it would react right away on her skin. She could tell right away. But not everybody does that. Not everybody has an immediate reaction, but that doesn't mean something's not happening, you know, to your body um, in maybe a more, um, you know, a a way that you're not noticing. so this can sound, this is sounding pretty depressing. <laughs> we don't mean to like bring everybody down to like, wow, okay, now my life is over. Let's just, uh, <laughs> you know, lay over and die because I'm just, you know, it, it's just about education and just helping us. And we're going to talk more of how we can not get overwhelmed, but we can work through a process that we can do, we can manage it, okay? But Lori has some more bad news. (laughs) She has some more information to share. I think I'm done with my bad news, actually. (laughs) Oh, okay, okay. All right. I don't think anybody can take any more, so um, let's move on to the good news, huh? (laughs) Okay. Okay, so a simple way I like to break it down, and some of you might have heard this from me before, is minimize, maximize, and prioritize, okay? So um, the prioritize is everybody's personal priority of what you, like you wrote those things down, so those are the things that stuck in your mind, so maybe that's the first thing you wanna minimize, right? You want to, maybe you want to take care of your laundry first. Like I'd like to rid my home, my, my laundry room of toxins. We're not advocating like you throw everything away. I mean, we're not, we, we don't advocate that. It's a process, right? Um, you can learn to, as you, you, unless you think it's, I really don't want to be using this anymore. Like maybe bleach or something like that, because you know how toxic that is. But that's a personal thing again. So um, we, we've got you covered, Lori and I and Young Living, because this is what we've done. We've, we've had our priorities. Mine was cleaners. Lori's was helping her skin to heal. And so everybody is going to decide in their home, where do you want to start? Like, what's the thing that you feel you would like to change first? And then you go from there. So um, Lori's gonna talk a little bit about thieves and that's, you know, that is the cleaning and there's a whole line. So it, it really, it's not just about cleaning. It, there's also personal care items and all that type of thing. Yeah, so it's a, the thieves bundle that I wanna tell you guys about. And, and I wanna just say, first of all, that 
if you're using this stuff and feeling bad about it, I was right there with you. I was using all this stuff. I was scrubbing my shower mm -hmm. with stuff that I couldn't stand to be in the bathroom with and feeling short of breath and my skin was breaking out. And I mean, I was right there doing all those things, but you know, I'm just so grateful that I'm not exposing myself to that because I'll tell you, I had a friend who started off that way and eventually started having like seizures when she would be exposed to certain fragrances and stuff. I mean, really bad. So the worse my symptoms got, the, the more I was like, I have to do something because I don't know what, how this is going to end for me. You know, I don't know what's going to become of me if I keep down this path using chemicals. So, so one easy, easy, easy way to change is to, to start with the thieves household cleaner. So the whole thieves line is based on the thieves essential oil. I think a lot of you probably know what that is, but but the legend, the name of the oil comes from the legend about four thieves who used a, a um, blend of herbs, in their masks and rubbed them on their bodies as they were like robbing the dead and dying during the Black Plague. And, and they didn't catch it. So um, they were actually granted um, leniency as the legend goes for um, giving their recipe for what they were using on their bodies. And it's the ingredients that are in the thieves essential oil, clove, yeah. lemon, cinnamon bark, eucalyptus, and rosemary. So um, all the things I'm gonna show you right now are in like a bundle um, together at a discounted price. So, but they're all based on this. So just with this oil, you can do so many things. You can diffuse it in your home. You can, um, Put it on the bottom of your feet, feet to support your immune system for overall wellness. They have it in a vitality, which is, which, is, which is labeled for internal use. And then you could put it in your tea. You can put it, make jacked up honey. I mean, there's just so many ways you can just use just this oil. But all the other things I'm going to show you incorporate this oil. So the next thing is the cleaner. This is Steve's household cleaner. So this bottle... See this cap, it's small, right? Well, to make a whole 16 ounce bottle of cleaner, you just need a cap full of this. So basically by using this cleaner, you can clean everything in your house with it. It's, it, um, it's plant-based with the Thieves Essential Oils. I clean everything, my kitchen, my bathroom, my shower, the car. Ken sprays it on our plants and they love it, even plants. Um, so it's a great product and it's not expensive because it, to get a 16 ounce bottle with this, it's less than a dollar a bottle. I mean, that's so economical. So who says that having, um, clean, having clean products has to be expensive. And most cleaning products today are well over $3 a bottle and you're just, you know, yeah. exposing yourself to all those toxins. So it's very economical. Let's see, what do I have here next? Oh, the mouthwash. So um, this is based on the thieves as well. Um, no alcohol, no dyes, no artificial flavors. Um, it, so it's the thieves blend along with spearmint and peppermint. And um, what's interesting about this too, is it has colloidal silver in it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with that, but it's something to Google because it's, it's a really great ingredient for, uh, for a mouthwash. And this is highly concentrated. So when I get this, I split it into two. You know, I, I pour half into another container and then I add water to this because it's so concentrated. I don't need it to be that strong. So I can get like two out of one. Um, then along with the mouth care is we have the, the toothpaste. So um, Melissa, our, our dental expert, she's gonna talk about um, the toothpaste, what she likes about it. Okay, so I've been in the dental field since 2001, and I'm going to tell you why I love the Thieves toothpaste. Um, we, well, we are groomed by the big uh, toothpaste companies to believe in fluoride, and so the reason why I love the Thieves is because it has no fluoride. Um, and 
The reason why we're groomed, if you look at the American Dental Association, who their sponsors are, um, it's Crest and um, Oral-B and they all sell fluoride toothpaste. Um, but if you know a little bit about fluoride, I'd like to tell you what it is. It's a waste byproduct of aluminum manufacturing and phosphate mining industries. It is a neurotoxin, hormonal disruptor and, and a carcinogen. It has been shown to cause osteosarcoma of the bone birth defects, hip fractures, hypothyroidism, calcification of the pineal gland, neurological dysfunctions, and lowering of IQ, just to name a few. So it also has been shown to increase the toxic effect of mercury on neurons in the brain. So if you have a mercury filling and then you use fluoride toothpaste, it's a very bad combination. Um, it's bad. Be, um, not only because of this, um, but we don't really need it. When the fluoride we do need as children, we get it through our water system because all our water in the United States has fluoride in it. Um, so there's some benefits to fluoride when your teeth are developing a very minimal amount. You get that when you're small and that's it. You don't need it anymore. Um, as a matter of fact, if you do your research, fluoride is banned in many European countries to the point where France has removed it from its water sources. Um, there's a whole list. Uh, Belgium has banned it. Uh, there's, I, I can't find the, oh, here we go. Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, they have all removed fluoride. So here in the United States, because the American Dental Association promotes it, most toothpaste have that, but it's because American Dental Association makes their money through sponsors from Oral-B and the big dental companies. Um, I used to work for a holistic dentist and they there's different uh, companies that sell fluoride-free toothpaste. Um, however, the price per tube is anywhere from 20 to $40 per tube. Um, and some that you could buy at either Walmart, you have to be careful because then they have other kinds of synthetic flavors right. or dyes. So Thieves is not only the um, no fluoride, no synthetic dyes, no artificial flavors or no preservatives. And the price you can't, beat to the ones that I used to, because I used to buy the one from where I used to work. And even for employees, I think I paid $22 a tube. Mm -hmm. So um, I did all this research on my own, even before getting to know uh, Young Living products, but having it able to be shipped to my house and that peace of mind that all the ingredients are listed on there. I understand what they are. I can Google what they are and the price and ship to my house in this pandemic. You can't beat that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa. That and I've got a lot of info on mouthwash, but that'll be another. Yeah. Another <laughs> I, yeah. And that, that's amazing. Is that the same fluoride that's found in our water that we drink? It is. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So you're telling me they're drinking water is not good and they're giving it to everybody. The whole United States all over the world is drinking water. That's not good. Yes. All Absolutely. over. No, not over the world. I All over the United States, the water has fluoride in it. But in other places in the world, it does not. Wow. Yeah, I actually, and, wow. So it's a, it's a poison. And I remember when my kids were little, my son was born in 82. Um, as soon as you take him to the dentist, they want you to take those fluoride pills. And I did my research and I said, no, you can give me the prescription, but will never be filled. If you insist on giving them a prescription, give it to me, but it will never be filled because I'm not poisoning my children because it is poison. I mean, what did Melissa say? I mean, flat out, it's a poison. I mean, they're not looking out for our welfare. It's about their pockets, their bottom dollar. And, 
you know, they don't want us to be well. So we need to take care of ourselves. And, and filtered water is really important that we drink filtered water. Um, there's all kinds of different, there's very expensive ones. There's, you know, but yeah, it's very important for us to, to, you know, drink filtered water, get some kind of filtration system, even if it's just a pitcher for your drinking water or whatever. But thank you so much, Melissa. That was great information. Yeah, fantastic information. So there's a couple more things in the, um, in the kit yet. We have a deep foaming hand soap which is, uh, again, is a plant-based um, hand soap that has the Thieves oil in it. And two of those come in the bundle. And then these two little gems are your Thieves um, hand sanitizer and your Thieves spray. So both of these have um, alcohol in it. The, the correct amount of alcohol um, based on the CDC to kill germs. So um, what's cool about these is the alcohol is denatured with peppermint oil. So denatured means what they put in it to make it not taste good so people won't drink it. So they denatured it with peppermint oil. So um, it smells fantastic. And, um, and it has the, the thieves essential oil. And um, they made, these have made the list of the CDC for actually approved to um, deal with COVID. So it's effective against COVID and that's, uh, you can find that on the CDC website. So um, this also has aloe in it. And so it's really soft on your hands, not like so many hand sanitizers make you, you know. Very, yeah, most are dry, very dry. Because and, alcohol is drying, yeah. Right. And you've probably seen, you know, that there's any number of lawsuits against companies that are now having really bad ingredients in their um, hand sanitizers. So it's kind of a shame because, you know, people are trying to use the hand sanitizer to keep safe from the, what's going on right now. But they're introducing a lot of chemicals into their body in the same way. So you wouldn't have the same problem with these. And this is a spray that you can use, like if you're on a public place and you want to spray your shopping cart, if you have to use a public restroom or whatever, that this is what the thief spray is for. So these two would definitely, you'd want to put in your purse. These are in my purse. And you can even spray that in your mouth or your dog's mouth. I mean, it's not, it's a um, totally safe thing to, to use. I mean, it, the alcohol's in it, but you know, it's minimal. So if, if you are you know, listening to all this and think I need to switch some things over, you can purchase this bundle for $125 and you get all of those things. And it's a great place to start. And you have made already a big um, dent into swapping out, switching and ditching, you know, um, to clean ingredients. So um, Denise was gonna talk about the makeup line a little okay. bit. Okay, I think you have a graphic for that. Um, oh, yes. So uh, one of the things is uh, what we what Melissa was talking about and Lori earlier about some of these countries have banned, I think United States has banned maybe 200 and some different chemicals. Uh, Europe, even China has banned a lot. Um, but uh, as far as makeup, um, I don't know if you can, the, the information's on there. Yeah, if you can minimize that or. Oh, what is that something blocking it? It just, it just has a responsibly sourced plant-based cruelty. You're making it bigger. <laughs> yeah. That's toxic free, essential oil infused. Um, is their makeup. Okay, there we go. And then there's the list of things. If you want to take a picture of this, there's the list of things that are in Savvy Minerals makeup. And that's things that you will never find in the, the makeup. Um, and some of those Lori mentioned in the Dirty Dozen, parabens, uh, petroleum based. We know petroleum is not a good a good product to use anything you don't want to put that in your skin on your skin or in your body um so those are the two the do's the yes list and the no list and then i think there was one where it talks about the different because i didn't write it down i was 
That's the only ones that I have, Denise. Oh, okay. All right. Let me see. Oh, I, I can't. Oh, wait. Maybe I can't. Sorry about that. Did I miss? Um, yes, I can find it here. I thought it was that, interesting too that the um, Young Living has banned, e, the EU has banned 1,328. Right, that's degrees. that's what I was looking for. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. But Young Living has banned even more than that. 2,500 ingredients they've banned. So they're they're uh, like, like I like the way Melissa said that they're, they're products that we can understand what they are. They're not these long names that look, what is that, you know? Um, so their, their makeup is very, very clean. Uh, their lipsticks don't have any of those dyes in or any of those dirty dozen. They're naturally uh, c colored uh, with, with natural, with plants. And uh, they may not be the, like, some of these are like, they'll stay on your lips for 24 hours or whatever, but think about what is in those things that could, it can stay bright on your lips for 24 hours. And the stuff you have to use to take it off because um, Young Living does have products to help makeup remover. Um, there's, there's so many things that you can switch and ditch. And then there's lotions too. Lori was going to talk a little bit about that because that's, and we are getting, you know, we've got 10 minutes left. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just, so um, I love this lotion. This is a lavender lotion. Um, Young Living has, I think about five or six different like scents of their lotion. But one of, one of my friends ordered this and she was like, I love this lotion. It goes on so smooth and I don't feel greasy. She's like, I hate feeling greasy. So it's really a really, really nice um, lotion. It contains coconut oil um, along with the essential oils, just different essential oils based on, on the scent that you choose. There's a lick about lavender. Lavender is calming, right? The essential oil lavender. So it calms your skin. I notice, like in the winter, I get dry skin. I put it on and I, my skin is calm and I'm calm. It really, it's just beautiful because it's powered by really pure therapeutic grade essential oils from Young Living, so. And along the same lotion line, I know for the Northerners, this, you, sunscreen isn't really on your mind right now, but this is a really great um, mineral sunscreen. And, um, you know, cause sunscreen is a major, if you look up the ingredients in most sunscreens, it's not really something you want to put on your body at all. So this is a, is a very good alternative and a little goes a long way for that. Um, also lip balm, this is the cinnamon lip balm. Um, it's a combination of coconut and jojoba seed oil. Interestingly, it also has the wolfberry seed oil. So a lot of you know the wolfberry from, from the Ningxia Red, but so it's also antioxidants in here from the wolfberry seed oil and it's no parabens, no phthalates, no petrochemicals, no synthetic anything. Mm -hmm. And um, also the deodorant, mm -hmm. which I know that Melissa is also um, a huge fan of the deodorant. If you want to say just a few words about the deodorant, that would be great. Sure. So same thing, even before Young Living, my best friend called me. Um, she had breast cancer at 37. And she told me the first thing that they took away, her oncologist, was um, her deodorant. So she was calling me to tell me, don't use regular deodorant. And um, so I started doing research and um, I found out that the American Cancer Institute says that there's no, no correlation. However, if you go to the National Cancer Institute, you see that the actual tests that they did were only on, one of the tests was on 500 women, which is not enough for a conclusive test. And the other was 48 women and 53 women. Um, so not enough, in my opinion, to uh, have a definite answer with that. Um, but if you look more on that website, it does tell you what they believe, the National Cancer Institute, that um, aluminum-based products, the major culprits are aluminum and parabens. And they show that even 
um, the aluminum, it'll plug your sweating so it doesn't let you your body detox. Um, and, the, and the paraben can act as a hormonal, um, dis what is it, hormonal uh, disruptor. And so they do acknowledge that there has been um, some research found that they've seen that the body is altered by these two chemicals. And that when they've removed some top breast tumors, there, have, there has been evidence of those parabens in the actual cancer cell. So they're trying to run the gray line of not admitting it and not completely towards it. But um, it does tell you that more research is needed, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, however, you do see that those two things, aluminum-based compounds and parabens, are on lists of um, the worst chemicals, basically, that you can expose your body to. Mm -hmm. So after that, I started looking into, uh, especially because I have a history of breast cancer in my family, and I first started going to this lady that made her own deodorant. I started using it. You have to go through a process of detoxing. Detox, yeah, because you smell for a while. In the beginning, you do, yeah. And it's amazing. It's like, okay, yeah. your body is trying to get rid of all these toxins you've been putting for years. Yeah. Um, but after doing the, the, the search, I started breaking out in a rash. And I discovered that what was in that was baking soda and my body in particular has a reaction to baking soda. Some people do not. Um, and then I started using other brand names that you can find at Walmart or Target and they all pretty much use baking soda. So I was getting the same reaction. But then fast forward to Young Living, they have four deodorants. There's uh, two of one line and two of the other. And the difference is that they, two of them use um, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda because it's a natural compound. Um, and two of them is an option for people like me that have a reaction to baking soda. They use zinc oxide and that is a natural mineral um, that's also antibacterial. So I've got one in one of each and I just tried it because I'm like, well, let's see. So I do great with both actually. So I'm not sure why, but when I'm normally react to baking soda on other products, I do not react on this one. But just to be safe, I alternate them. Um, and, you know, I don't know because I don't want to have a rush in, in my underarms. And, um, and which ones are they, Melissa? So the Cinefresh and the Citragard are made with baking soda and the natural oils. And then the Meadow Mist and the Mountain Mint are made, made with zinc oxide. And they've worked for me. They, I've switched my whole family. They work for my husband. Um, and the scent is good. You will sweat because you need to sweat in order for your body to detox. So it's you don't want something that will plug your, your pores and won't let you detox. So you right. will sweat but you won't stink after you go through that detox period. And I, and it's also uh, the price, I believe one is $11 and the other one's around 12 or $13 mark, where if you go to Target or Walmart and buy native, it's $14, um, mm -hmm. at least here in New York. I can't remember what it's in Florida. Uh, so even the price point is great and you can get it delivered, which for me, not, going out is great yeah. at this point with the COVID. So that's what, those are my two cents for the deodorant. What awesome. is the site you were saying in the beginning? What was that website? What, for what, for the deodorant? No, for the, uh, when you were talking about the cancer, um, the, the cancer with breast cancer, you it's mentioned the, a website. The National Cancer Institute. Oh, okay, just the net, okay. It's uh, cancer.gov. And they write down all the studies and you can see how very little study there has been, but they do admit of um, that um, parabens and aluminum are carcinogens. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to do your research. 
Um, a lot of these things have already, like you said, in the cosmetics and have been banned in, in the European Union. And, and for me, it's been a process and I'm still in the process because mm -hmm. there's still things that I need to switch, but I feel uh, good that I'm on the journey and trying to make better decisions. That's all we can do, you know, try to inform yourself and make better decisions. 100%, that's awesome. I just, awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that, Melissa. It's great information. We don't want to leave our men out because there is also a, a line of products for men. It's called the Shoe Tran line. This is just one example of the aftershave that's in the Shoe Tran line. They have also a three-in-one body wash, a bar soap, a beard oil, an essential oil blend, and a shave cream. So Dylan uses, what do you use, Dylan? He was going to share a little bit about what you use the shaving cream, right? Yeah, I use that. So what do you think about it? I like it because um, my other shave and cream used to clog my pores and I would break out. And with this new shave and cream, it doesn't, it doesn't make me break out anymore. That's awesome. Very good. You like the smell? I do. Um, the other one, my mom used to chase me out of her room. <laughs> <laughs> literally the, the with the other one <laughs> and this one she, it doesn't this one she actually likes the smell mm -hmm. that's yeah. awesome so thanks for sharing so there's products for our men too so i yeah, know the, the men the three-in-one <laughs> body wash the is nice because it's for hair and body yeah so it's just a, for one 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 product they need and men like simple so exactly. that's the, nice one bottle in the shower so one thing, you know, we, we want to respect your time. We know it's a little bit after eight, but, you know, if you're thinking about um, how you can do this economically, that, that there is a program to help you where you can do it a little bit at a time. It's, a, it's called Essential Rewards, and it's a, where you can um, get, have a monthly wellness box delivered to your home. So you can figure out, like Denise said, what's your priorities, you know, what you want to switch and ditch. And each month you can pick one or two or three things and um, have it in your monthly wellness box that you change every month. And when you, when you order that way, the advantage of doing it is, is um, Young Living gives you a percentage back of your order in rewards points where you can buy other items. So the first three months you get 10% back, months four to 24, you get 20% back and month 25 on, you get 25% back. I mean, if you go and buy stuff at Target on your red card, what do they give you back? Like 3% or something like that? Young Living would give you 25% back in points. So that's huge. And it's an easy way to do it a little bit at a time, economical, you know, mm -hmm. just switching and ditching a few things. And yeah, and the minimum is $50. So it's not a huge amount. When we think about when we go to Target, how much we spend on things, $50 really isn't that much. And of uh, is a hundred dollars is free shipping. So that, um, so the more things you can switch over and there's, there's so many products, there's even food products and we can't even get into that, but yeah. So I know, uh, um, I think I answered, uh, if anybody had any questions, um, we would take a few minutes to do that, Karina. Yeah, can you mix and match like, can you pick a box and pick a few items that you want to try? Yes, you, you choose your date. Um, you have a date every, every month, like say it's the 15th, but you can change that date every month. You can change, go in and manually change the date and you can change your order every month. Okay. Thank so you. there's no, it's not a set order. You make your order what you want it to be. Okay. And I think, Lori, did you get all the names for the raffle? We were going to do a raffle. Yes. Yeah. And uh, okay. there's a Google oh, Doc that Lori just posted. If anybody fill that out and she'll tell you what you'll get if you fill that out. Oops. Sorry. One second. I didn't add um, Ashley. Okay, let me share real quick. 
and we'll do the raffle. Well, I guess I could tell you what you're winning is uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a sample of laundry detergent um, and a sample of the Thieves household cleaner. So that's enough for two 16 ounce bottles and this is enough for four loads of laundry. And then a sample of the lavender lotion and uh, some of the peppermint oil. So let's share. See the wheel. All right, here we go. Susie won. Mm. Oh, it's oh, Janet. Janet won. <laughs> it was right on the edge. I was wondering who was going to pick. I closed it too fast. Oh, yep, it went over into Janet. Janet won. <laughs> Sorry for the false alarm, Susie. I'm going to send you a prize. It's okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Thank you for that nice. Uh, I, just have, I just have a question. Sure. With all we're talking about, detoxing and everything, I, I put in the chat note that the worst of them all is your hair dye. And I know everybody dyes their hair. So, you're just filling yourself with toxic and that's number one cancer. Yeah. Yes. What do you use? Me? Your I stopped dyeing my hair. Dye in your hair. You can use I henna. stopped dyeing my hair a year uh, ago and it's all it's all yeah. coming in natural. I have my natural gray hair. Yeah. I stopped dyeing it. And even the yeah. organic and I am fifty I, I I am what forty I am going on 59 in April and this is my hair right now mm. looks great and it's all natural <laughs> yeah I, I just decide I'm not going to do it anymore that's one thing I eliminated mm. out and it's hard but I'm going to do it Good hope we you. gave it to us like this why are we going to change it yeah that's how I feel very good thanks for sharing that so we can see can you see how easy it is to start to minimize, maximize, and prioritize and incorporate a, lot, a low toxic lifestyle in your home and the importance of doing that? And can you see that we have a whole community here? Um, also, when you become a member with, with us, we're part of Team Live Well if you're on Facebook. And there are so many different wonderful educational things on there to help you to grow, to learn. It's, it's just a fun, fun group of women who support one another and, and men too for, uh, for our, our, our uh, friend there. And um, you can, can you see yourself like diffusing instead of using plugs, plugins, setting up a diffuser, you've got the beautiful light. Um, you can, it can help to calm the atmosphere, clean the air. And um, I'm just so excited to help as many families. I know Lori is too. We're very excited to help as many families as we can to switch and ditch and just see how they can really increase their wellness really by doing this. So if you wanna stay on, if, if, any, if you wanna leave, thank you again so much for coming. I've enjoyed this so much. I hope you did. Um, if you want to stay on a few more minutes with it, we can show you how you can get started and, or we can show you how you can actually get your products paid for uh, simply by sharing like we're doing tonight, just sharing with your friends, telling them about it um, and how, how you can simply do that. So if anybody wants to stay on, that would be great. If not, have a great evening and a great weekend. Bye, Ashley. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Mara. Bye. Bye. Um, I actually have a question about the deodorant. That's okay. Yeah. Um, oops, can you hear me? Okay. Um, I have been drawing deodorant for years, and I can't find one that works well because I, when I get nervous, I sweat horribly. <laughs> and it, and um 
nothing really ever works for it. Sometimes I notice um, if I, it just, it's strange how my body works with that, but I just wanted to know how it would work for you, Melissa, with, for example, I mean, not to be gross or a woman here, but if I, sometimes if I sweat and then it goes on my shirt and I can't wear certain types of shirts, cause then you could see the ring. And I'm like, what on earth is wrong with my body here? <laughs> so I just wanted to know if that has happened with you or um, if you noticed a change in it um, by using that type of deodorant. Um, you mean in I, the amount of sweat? Or yeah, because I know the the point of the um, the other one, the one that you were saying that clogs up your pores, it's, it's so you don't sweat. Which so you I, don't which sweat. Is, and I get the concept and it's kind of what I need because I don't want it to come out on my shirt. You know what I mean? So like I understand, but it's also not good that we actually do need that. We need to sweat. To maybe, get once, maybe once you detox, you won't have that problem. Maybe once you That's detox really your armpit, you won't have that problem, you know? <laughs> But, but they I'm also not, no, have sure. they also have these liners where you can yep. put on shirts. I was gonna so just say that because I have the same issue and there's liners and I have expensive, really expensive dresses and tops at times, and then they have yeah. liners. It looks like a maxi pad basically. It does. Really? And uh -huh. you, uh, yeah, on Amazon. I've never heard of that. Yeah. Huh. Lisa, have you heard of that? Yes, I have. That's interesting. Okay. And what I found, what I did, because I lived in Florida before here, and when I okay. did the switch, um, we were doing witnessing outside, and it was like right. 90 degree weather, right. and I'm like sweating. Exactly. So <laughs> in the beginning, I did have to wear an undershirt, like a cotton undershirt to kind of soak up some of that sweat. Right. Um, and then uh so i so my main blouse didn't get all that but i had my undershirt kind of like how men do and right. it picks up some of that sweat i did notice that after um maybe six months i i still i mean i sweat now i don't like it's funny because i don't sweat in my face but i sweat here yep that's I, my problem I, yep. I still sweat i don't think that's ever going to go away i mean we need to sweat but right. I found that it's a little 